Thank you, Chair Ferreres Copeland, for your leadership in these uh, hearings. Thank you, Dean, for your partnership in response to questions posed at these hearings and putting the budget online, reforming quality of life violations, collecting millions in debt, and reducing amounts and planned payouts to those who sue the city. Thank you. Uh, this means fewer questions, but those that remain, you've heard before for years, so I'm expecting answers this year. Uh, so first, when someone asks the city for money, do you think we should ask what they'll do with it? I, I, actually, this one I don't recall, so I want to make uh, sure it's, I'm it's not. A, it's a turn on it, which is just a follow up. Do you believe we should tie our city's investments to performance goals? I, I think we should, obviously, in many places, we should have performance goals. We should always be measuring what success is, but there are many different ways to do that. So, so I'm asking the same question as previously, which is, will you agree to follow the city charter, section 12, mandating that the mayor's management uh, report include a, quote, relationship between program performance goals and corresponding appropriations? We've gotten a commitment from the mayor's office of operations to do so, but we need an office of management and then, budget. Then you know what? You, we should get together with the mayor's office of operations. I'm quite sure we can figure a way to address that, as we did the other commitments I made to you, and we succeeded in, in taking care of Do you promise to do so before the executive budget here? I, we should have a meeting as soon as we can, which Great. I can be next week. Uh, and now when you've uh, bought a house or a car, have you only budgeted for the purchase price, or have you typically budgeted for maintenance, too? And the follow-up on that is going to be? <laughs> <laughs> uh, when will the city budget to maintain uh, the tens of billions in new capital construction and adopt life cycle accounting? So I think, well, the two different questions in there. I do believe that we are doing a much better job of maintaining our facilities. A great deal of what we put forward in our capital planning process is about maintaining our infrastructure. Actually, the vast majority about that of our capital budget now is about maintaining our infrastructure and improving it. So, so, so we are, could we, we are, tie the, so, so when somebody's investing in a, a new building or a new park or whatnot, can we make sure that associated with that investment of capital, we either have capital maintenance if it's capitally eligible or expense and have that baseline so that we're actually investing in the future, not just doing one-offs that then fall apart? Uh, the goal is never to do one-off and have something fall apart. The goal is to continue to make an investment. We're making a huge investment this year in the capital infrastructure and the maintenance of that capital infrastructure. As to exactly what you would like me to commit to uh, going forward I and mean, how that's reflected in a budget, that I think we need to talk through. Sure. So the, the next question is, uh, when you, if you should perchance go to buy a car, would you be willing to pay twice the sticker price? And the follow-up to that one is? <laughs> Why is the city still consistently paying more than we agreed to in contracts with regard to the $4 billion in potential contract overruns, which we have only continued to grow by hundreds of millions each year? Three years later, do we have an answer? So this is a tough conversation because earlier the question was that we were putting too much money into capital projects and overestimating the amount of the capital projects. Uh, we, I have said here, we have made improvements in our capital budgeting process. We have certainly made improvements in the planning, in the planning process of capital budgeting. And do we need to do and continue to make efforts? And we're happy to work with you to continue to make efforts both in, in what the capital commitment plan looks over time. We have made clearly more investments. We're doing it at both OMB and in the agencies to do more pre-scoping, more design work up front. We need things like design build from Albany that give us that flexibility to address very much the kind of question you're talking about because we, very often it's the delay in the number of years in a major capital project that 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 results and it's almost it's almost impossible not to result in additional cost overruns and we know with things like design build that would not be mm -hmm. happening and and so just for final question in the first round the city's currently 72 billion dollars in debt and you plan on borrowing an additional 17 billion to 89 billion by 2021 the last possible year for this mayor each new yorker's share of the city's debt is currently more than $8,400, and a child born in 2021 will be $10,400 in debt under this plan. It 
must be nice to have tens of billions of dollars to borrow. What will the next administration do when this mayor has borrowed all the money that there might be left to borrow under our debt limit? Well, the question is, do we want to maintain and do we maintain in a responsible way the capital infrastructure that we all care about? Do we reach capacity for school districts or don't we? Do we invest and maintain redundancy in, in our water system or don't we? There was a huge commitment, for example, on the third water tunnel that has gone on for decades. Those kind of capital commitments are important to the future and the future income of this city. What we do maintain, and we have maintained and not broken, which other administrations in the past did, that we do not allow the annual debt service to go above 15% of city tax revenues. And we've maintained that. We've maintained it, and it's been recognized. There's a reason that in every credit report, and I'm quite sure you read these, every credit report by every rating agency, that we are constantly complimented on the fiscal management and the way we approach this. When I asked about reducing debt, you posed a Hobson's choice between debt and vital city investments when we can just spend money. I, we I didn't mean to. Well, we, we, can, we can just spend the money we make each year on infrastructure. Would you buy a TV in cash or would you buy it on layaway? So I, I, I'm sorry. I, I, we may fundamentally disagree about this, but okay. uh, I, I, I don't. Um, How much infrastructure is the city build, uh, building using revenue for pay-go construction projects? There, there's not. There's not as, I'll get you the exact pay-go number. There is some pay-go, but it is not the majority of our capital budget. The majority of our capital budget is funded by, is funded by debt service, and there are, the debt, the type of infrastructure we're talking about has a long period of, has a useful life, and we're very careful about that. We're if, very careful about what is capitally no, no, I, eligible I, I, and what if, is not. If, if, I got it, if we can just move, so this is something I've raised with the mayor himself at budget meeting after budget meeting, year after year. So can we, re and along the same lines, and so could we reform city planning, environmental assessment and review and development to ensure that new construction where development developers make billions are forced to make vital investments in our city's infrastructure. Once again, with many deputy mayors uh, who have different aspects of this, I'm happy to have a conversation about what we should be requiring as we move forward. The whole affordable, affordable housing program is about leveraging private money using public money to get to um, to get to 200,000 affordable housing units. And, and so, but I guess, and we, I support affordable housing and I've proposed a zoning change in my district for that, but along the same not, need lines, we have a huge need for other vital services. So the Department of Education identifies the need for 82,811 seats for our children, but the city has still only funded 44,000 no, we, we have fully funded. We have, I'm sorry, we have fully funded. In the 10-year plan. In the 10-year plan, but that's correct. But we need those seats now in the five-year. That's a five-year projection. Uh, can we fund the 82,811 seats now for we the five-year? We are year? funding what, D, what SCA, which was given a great deal of compliments throughout the day here today, believes is what they can do and where they can find sites. And, and so along those lines, of the 44,324 funded seats, only 20,314 seats, uh, nearly half uh, don't have a site selected. So they have nowhere to build these seats. Do you think including- they, they, they have in their plan, and they traditionally are able to fulfill the vast majority of their plan, which was also a topic that was discussed here today. They have been very successful at doing that, so we have faith in SCA's ability to accomplish that. We, we had a hearing on this on the 28th, and I, I do not share your confidence. Do you think including bonuses uh, with more square footage for new developments that include community facilities like schools could help us develop the tens I, of thousands? I think where we can, where we can partner in developments, including at schools, we should pursue that and we should try to pursue that. I don't disagree with you there. At the same time, it's not, it's not, it is w simply one avenue that may be available, but there may be a lot of complexities and a lot of things that prevent us going down that avenue. I, I think my major concern is every major development in my district that the SCA ignores uh, in my district and throughout the city is another missed opportunity to build seats because we're replacing 
buildings with 20 units of affordable housing, with buildings with more than 200 units of luxury housing. And uh, I, I imagine you'd agree that those 200 units will have people who live there who will have children who so, will send there. So once again, and, and I've heard other people in the administration, certainly Carl Roycebroad when he was at city planning, talk mm -hmm. about wherever we can do, where, where it is possible to do uh, co-location of facilities, we should try to pursue that. I'm happy to have that conversation with us. And, and so SCA has identified no new need, despite thousands and thousands of new units going up in my district. And so I'm, I'm appealing I'm to you as the OMB director to uh, please make sure that SCA is planning properly, accounting for all the new construction, and making sure that every single child in the city of New York as a public school seat so, that they so can So happy to talk to SCA about that, happy to talk specifically about your district. We should remember that the current five-year capital plan of SCA at $15.5 billion is the, once again the highest that the city has ever, ever come close. To. No one has ever come close to this kind of commitment to education facilities for our children. 